On today's show, we're going to do a viewer requested video, and we're starting right now. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard. This is the show that explores the world of 3D printing, and you're coming along for the ride today because we've got a lot in store for you. Viewer requested video. Actually, this has been requested many times, and uh, people want to know how to get the BL Touch installed in the firmware, particularly now in Marlin 2.0. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pick a machine. We're going to show you how to open up Marlin 2.0. We're going to show you where you've got to make the changes and how to upload it to your uh, printer. So let's get started. We're going to jump over to the computer because so, we've got lots to do. All right, we're over here at the computer. We've already downloaded the latest version of Marlin, and that's Marlin 2.0. You can see it right up here in the upper corner of my screen. Let's uh, quickly open up that folder. Where do you get this? Well, you can get this online, and I'm going to leave links to everything that we're talking about today down in the description. I'm not going to go through the whole let's find it online thing because we've done that in the past, so I'll just leave links on where you can download this. All right, so first and foremost, you want to go to the config file, and we'll double click on that and open it up. You'll see a readme file in there. When you double click that readme file, you're going to see that it's got a link here to go and get the configurations archive. And what this configurations archive is, it's an archive of many different manufacturers and models of 3D printers. So it gives you a starting base of where to go. So we're gonna get out of this and uh, we'll go back up and you can see I've already got it downloaded. It's right up here on my desktop. And if we go into the config file here, you'll see two files, one that says default, the other that says examples. If we want the default set up, we're just gonna take these two files and put them over into our Marlin. But in this case, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna go through and uh, let's go to the artillery and the Sidewinder X1. You're gonna see there's three files here. So we're gonna grab all three of these files we're gonna copy them. We're not gonna move them, we're just gonna copy them. And when we close this folder, we're going to go over to the Marlin folder, and you'll see here that there are the same three files here. All we're gonna do is we are now just gonna paste in those three files, and we're gonna replace the destination files. Now the status screen one, this one wouldn't normally be there, but I put it in from a previous, so I'm just gonna get rid of it just to tidy up my screen a little bit. Now we can actually go into the configuration and the configuration advanced files right from here, but let's do it through Marlin and the latest Arduino IDE. So we're gonna double click on that. We are running the latest Arduino IDE, so it's going to come up and now you'll see uh, if you're running the latest version of Marlin, that it only has five tabs up at the top. The first thing that you want to do, if you haven't done this already, is go to Preferences. And we are going to make sure that our display line numbers right here has got a checkbox. So we're going to make sure that that is checked. And then we're just going to click OK. Now... We've got our configuration H and our configuration advanced H. The one that we're gonna play in today is the configuration H. Now, if you've turned on those line numbers, they'll be exactly as they are on my screen. So you wanna make sure that this is happening for you. So let's uh, go down and let's find where we're going to get started here. We're gonna have a look at a couple things as we go through. We can see here it says define show the boot screen. So it's gonna show a boot screen. And then we are going to pass all this. Now, in this particular case, they're using a baud rate of 2,500. I think 2,500 is okay, but you can run into problems with 2,500. A lot of the times I'll change this to 115,200. So 115,200. Uh, but we'll leave it at, at this for now because this is not really what we're trying to get into today. Um, we can see here that our motherboard is defined as the MKS Gen L, a great board, very easy board to work with, and a very easy board to install your um, BL Touch on. So in this video, we are just talking about the firmware. 
All right, so we're going to scroll down past a lot of what we see here right now. We're going to stop on certain areas that I think are important for you. And uh, first and foremost, if we continue through here, we're going to get past all the mixing extruders. Thermal settings. This is something that's very important. You want to make sure that you're using the proper thermal settings. Um, now, the Sidewinder I know uses uh, the 1K resistors, which is, or the 100K uh, thermistors. They're the Epox 100K uh, 4.7 pull ups. These are very typical on a lot of 3D printers. So uh, I, would, uh, I would assume that those are correct. I don't have a Sidewinder myself, but I am going to assume that they are correct. You don't have to touch anything in here. Um, we have a max redundant temp sensor difference of 10. What this does is it keeps us from going to the max that our printer will allow us to do. Um, so this is going to, if your printer temperature maxes out at 275, it's actually going to max out at 265. So that's something to keep in mind. And we'll get past all of this. You can see here on line 453 that we define the heater temp at 275 and our max bed temp at 150. I think that max bed temp's a little high. I usually have mine max at about 120. But we'll leave it at that for now because this is um, the Sidewinder firmware. So where we have to go is we have to scroll all the way down um, first and foremost, we're going to stop here at uh, the thermal runaway protection line 592. You want to make sure that this is enabled. And if you've done exactly what we did at the beginning of this video, where we took those three files and we dumped them in here, this should look exactly the same as mine. And we'll get past all of the end stops. Now, this is telling us that we have TMC 2100s on the stock board that comes with the Sidewinder X1. So we're going to leave all this alone because we haven't changed the board. We don't have a board to change. I have this board, but I don't have TMC 2100s on it. So we'll just uh, continue down. This is where you're going to find your default steps. Try not to change any of this because this has been pre-calculated for you based on your machine. And where we want to end up, first and foremost, is right here at line 892, where it says Define BL Touch. You'll see that there are two little uh, forward slash marks here. We're just going to highlight them and delete them, okay? Once we've deleted them, that is now enabled for the BL Touch. We don't have to worry about BL Touch 3, BL Touch 2, none of that. We just have to make sure that we've enabled the BL Touch. Now, this is going to set the probe offsets already done for you. You may want to go in there and, and clean that up. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it the way that it is. We're going to go down now to where we are going to do our actual bed leveling. And as we go down, you're going to come across uh, at line 1173 bed leveling. Once you're there, you know that you're in the right spot. Let's quickly talk about the different types of bed leveling that there are. There's auto bed leveling three point. It's an arbitrary point. It's It probes three ar arbitrary points on the bed that haven't been uh, collinear that, or that aren't collinear. Uh, you specify the x, y coordinates of the three points. The result is a single tilted plane. It's best for a flat bed, but we know that most 3D printer beds are not completely flat. Uh, so we move on to auto bed leveling linear. Now, this is going to probe in a grid, but again, this is best for flatter beds. It's just going to give you a, a tilt plane. The one that we're really interested in is the auto bed leveling by linears. What this is going to do, again, it's going to create um, a grid pattern and the resulting mesh uh, is going to tell you where you've got high and low spots. And this is great for larger uneven beds. Now there's unified bed leveling. That's a little bit more advanced. There's some other features that go into that. And then there's mesh bed leveling if you want to have complete control over the bed leveling. For us, we're going to use bilinear. So we're going to make sure that those two little uh, 
forward slashes are deleted. Now, I always like to turn on um, the debugging leveling feature. That's at line 1227. And we get rid of those two. I like to have that just so that I can go in and see if there's any issues that I might be having. And you'll learn how to use this through experience. We'll maybe do another episode later on down the line where we talk a little bit more about this. So now your grid points. If you're using a smaller bed, three is fine. If you are using a larger bed, something about 12 inches by 12 inches or larger, I like to go four points. That's going to give me a total of 16 points on the bed that it's going to measure and it's going to give me a little bit more accurate now what that does for you in the long run is it is it gives you a better idea of how the bed is is transitioning while it's heating or, or giving you that transition of high and low spots uh, on the bed so it's a it's a little bit more thorough than just doing three spots so now we can uh, bypass the rest of this because the rest of it doesn't matter to us. And we are all set. We know that our bed's not skewed, so we don't have to turn on any of the skewed fact factors. Uh, we do want to make sure that our EEPROM settings are enabled. with a, uh, We can disable them with a 503, uh, M503 command. Um, and the reason that we want this is, is because what's going to happen with the printer itself is that it is going to store the information that it collects during that probing into that EEPROM setting for the duration of that print. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, the easiest part of this is done, or the hardest part of this is done. Let's go and change a couple of things here. Uh, for PLA, I like to have mine at 200. The bed shouldn't be any more than 60. Uh, your temperatures on ABS, that might be great for them. So we'll leave that. Now we've got everything set that we need. We don't need to define the park. Um, and let's go ahead and just save this or check it. We'll verify it now and see if it actually verifies. So you'll notice down at the bottom here, we have a little indicator down in the bottom corner that is going to, uh, it's basically your, your progress bar. This progress bar is going to show you how far it's come while it's uh, now just checking the code and making sure that everything is in fact okay. We are gonna get an error because we are not using a Sanguino board. Uh, that's something I did not change. So I'm going to take you up and show you that as soon as it gives us the error, it's going to kick us out here right shortly. Okay, so you can see that it threw us an error, error compiling for board sanguino. If you get an error like this, it means that you are not using the right board. And I've had a, a few emails recently about this. So what you want to do is you want to go up to tools. And in this case, we are using, if we remember at the beginning, we're using the MKS Gen L board which works on the Arduino Mega or Mega 2560 chipset. So we're just gonna click that. We are now going to make sure that we are on the A, uh, under the processor, we wanna be at the at Mega 2560. And the COM port in this case doesn't really matter because we're not actually going to be uploading this to a board. But if you are uploading to a board, make sure that your COM port is selected correctly. All right, so we've, we've corrected that error. Let's verify and compile this one more time. All right, so it threw us back an error. I've just gone ahead and opened this up a little bit more so we can see what the error is. Uh, in this case, we did not enable the Z safe homing or the Z safe homing. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go Control F and we are just going to type in Z safe homing. And we're going to find it. We can close this. And we can see here that that was one thing that we forgot to do. When you're using the BL Touch, you have to enable Z Safe Homing. So we're just going to uh, enable that by getting rid of the two little slashes as we've done in the past. And we're going to compile this one more time. 
And there we have it. Down at the bottom here, you can see that the sketch uses uh, 9,000 or 91,618 bytes or 72% of the program storage space. Maximum is uh, 12,000 or 126,976 bytes. Uh, the global variable uses 3,240 bytes, which is only 39% of the dynamic memory. Now, this dynamic memory is where it is storing all of um, the things that it has to do when it is printing your uh, product or, or model. So we want to make sure that uh, we have enough room so that it can cache all that information onto the board. Our next step would be now to upload it to our board. Again, we want to have our board connected to the computer via USB cable and then just upload it to the board. Make sure that everything is set correctly. Make sure that you're, you follow the directions on the installation of your BL Touch and everything should be good. Now, once you've done that, we're not gonna do it here because we don't have to, we don't have a board ready for it, but we're gonna show you uh, that on a later video. Now we're gonna close this, we're gonna close out of Marlin. Now the one thing that we wanna do is we wanna open up our slicer. Now I tend to use um, Cura for the most part now. So I'm just going to double click on Cura. We're going to open up Cura here. All right. So we have Cura open here. Uh, let's go to a uh, printer. The one that we were putting in before, we're just going to add that printer. All right. Let's just pick anyone for the sake of, of doing this. Um, we will just go in and, uh, for lack of a better one, we'll use, um, BQ. Okay. Let's use the i3 Havestos. We'll add that one. So this is our Prusa i3 Havestos. Now what we want to do, and this is going to be for any printer that you have a BL Touch on. You're going to go into Manage Printers. You're going to find the printer that you want to manage and you're going to go to Machine Settings on Cura. When you're in Machine Settings, you're going to go down to where it says Start G-Code and you'll be able to scroll through there and you'll come across this line, G28, X, Y, 0, and then G28, Z, 0. What you want to do is you want to put in a carriage return or an enter. Let me just uh, back that up a bit. There we go. We're going to put it right here. There we go in the proper spot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to type in G29 space semicolon and this is going to be BL touch. So what this is going to do is on every print, we can now close this and we can close this. So on every print, it is going to go to the center. It's going to put down the probe. It's going to find the center. Then it's going to do a 16 point pattern across the bed to give it a level or a mesh in which it can tell you where your high and your low spots are. And it will adjust accordingly when it is putting down the plastic. And that really is all there is to it. So that really is all there is to actually doing a uh, or setting up a BL Touch in your firmware using Marlin 2.0. And it is quite easy and it's been easy for a while. It just can be a little bit confusing if you don't know what to look for. Follow the prompts, follow what we did today, and you should have no trouble setting it up. Now, as far as the Z offset goes, uh, you'll be able to set that up. I'm going to link uh, in the description down below to a video where we show you how to set up the Z offset on your 3D printer and you can do that and save those uh, values uh, for just about any printer on the market today once you've added a BL Touch. And that will be your Z offset because you're going to need to set a Z offset for your BL Touch, okay? With that said, uh, this is the end of today's show. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, thanks very much. Uh, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and uh, we are going to see you next time right here on The First Layer. My name is Richard, and remember that The First Layer is always your foundation to a great print. Go and check out some of these other videos that we have.